Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of How Did You Get Here? On today's episode, we're going to be talking to Dr. Terry Harris, who is an Associate Professor in Accounting at the University of Durham. Welcome, Terry. Thanks, Melanie. <laughs> Happy to be here. Okay, so for those of you who don't know, I actually met Terry when I was an undergrad student at the University of the West Indies Cable Campus in Barbados, where Terry is originally from. So Terry, do you want to talk a little bit more about Barbados, where you're from, um, your different experiences, and just who you are as a person? Sure. Um, right. So as you said, you know, I'm associate professor now at Durham University, originally from Barbados, where I taught at University of West Indies for a couple of years. And also I did my undergraduate and postgraduate master's degrees at University of West Indies. Cape Hill campus. Um, a little bit about Barbados. So Barbados, of course, is a fantastic island. You should visit if you've never been. You know, it's yeah. almost as good as St. Lucia. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's just a nice, a nice country. Yeah, of course, you have mountains. Yeah, Don't forget, some my family's from St. Lucia, so you know, I still big up St. Lucia all the time. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, and um, well, I guess the people want to know, how did you get here? How did you become an associate professor? Um, what exactly led you to this field? And just what is it like now being an assistant professor at a university in the UK? Okay, um, well, I, I kind of plan my, my undergraduate course of study focus on combining computer science and accounting and finance because those are my, my my main interests so i studied computer science and accounting at university of west indies undergraduate um undergraduate level and i did a master's in computer science and i also did the ecc in accounting and so how i got to durham is i wanted to do my phd at, at a point in time i was i was teaching at university of west indies um in the in the management studies department so i was teaching accounting essentially at the University of West Indies and still teaching. I think I was also teaching in computer science department as, as well, but teaching tutorials, nothing major, just teaching tutorials basically um, in computer science department. And I was doing a little bit of lecturing um, in my studies. So I wanted to do, I wanted to like cap my studies off uh, and I wanted to do a, a PhD, obviously, because I was pursuing a, an academic career. And of course, um, you have to do this PhD thing if you're going to be pursuing academia. You know, they kind of like twist your hands. You have to do it. So, you know, so I'm I'm, I'm looking around for universities and I, I, I first um, made contact with uh, a gentleman that turned out to be my supervisor and Dennis, Phillip, Dennis Phillips. I like his profile. He liked my background in computer science and essentially accounting and finance. So we were a good, a good um, match for each other because a lot of the work that he was interested in doing was making use of data analytics. And of course, if you had programming skills, this turned out to be very useful. Um, using data analytics to develop variables to understand certain phenomena in finance. And this is so this is how I came into contact with Durham, um, my supervisor, I started doing my PhD there with them. And then at some point in time, and an opportunity opened up at Durham for a, a, a teaching position opened up at, at Durham. And this is basic lecturer position in the accounting department. And he told me about it and I applied, was shortlisted, was interviewed. And by some miracle, they selected me and the rest is history actually. So that's what happened. It's not by some miracle. We all know that you're super smart. So don't try and downplay it, <laughs> please. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I <don't know> yeah. <laughs> no, but I'm really interested in finding out whether or not um, you had that plan in mind when you were deciding to major in computer science and accounting, like, did you know that this is the pathway that you would be interested in following or? Oddly, oddly enough, in my life, I tend to just go where life is taking me because I, I, I tend to try to go um, where, go with the flow, right? As opposed to trying to fight where the, where the current life is taking you because of course if you go with the flow you know maybe you you, you can take advantage of, of more opportunities that way that's how i tend to live my life but in this case with respect to what i wanted to study i i was very selective about this because I, I knew i wanted to do something creative so i wanted to pursue computer science and i also wanted a job so that's how accounting came in so i so at undergraduate level I was like okay well i opened the paper i remember I remember being on my mother's um, 
table, dining room table, and thinking about, okay, so what am I going to study at university, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, okay, well, let me open the paper and I'm seeing jobs for accounting, accountant, assistant accountant. I was like, okay, well, I know I'm going to be doing accounting because mm -hmm. I'm going to get a job that way. Um, and then uh, then I wanted to do something creative and computer science was 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 that thing that where you could, you know, you can actually create a, a, a program, you know, you could do, a, there are a lot of things you can do with computer science. So I, I knew I wanted to, to pursue that and something else, and that something else was accounting, just for career purposes. Also, um, given my interest in accounting, I wanted to I wanted to um, pursue a career targeted at some of the financial accounting standards. So this can become very technical, but there are some accounting standards that were um, scheduled to come out when they, when they were graduated, and it turns out that the combination of accounting and computer science skills was um, would, would make me very uh, marketable um, when, I, when I graduated, and particularly standard was IRPRESS 9, but that's, again, an accounting thing. Yeah, I know nothing about that. But... Know, right? That's why I'm not going to go in that direction anymore. Right? No, but I mean, there are people listening who probably have very but, much yeah, right, to yeah. talk so, about. So I, wanted, I wanted to make sure that I had the skills to, to fit the market at the point in time when they would graduate. Um, and that standard was going to come out like just after I graduated. So I just wanted to make sure that I was... I had the skills. You know, that's so great because for me, it's unbelievable that you were actually able to think that far ahead and you're looking at like the jobs that were available because as you know, I studied languages. I personally did not care <laughs> about what <laughs> career <laughs> I was Why going to love? Right? Then what you love. But no, I'm just very much in awe that you're actually thinking that far ahead because a lot of people we have on this um, show, they just talk about, yeah, they fell into their career, but for you, it was very much planned out. <laughs> So that's very interesting to see for me, at least. I, I still, I still tended to go like where, where like it was taking me yeah. because, um, so that philosophy was still on guiding things a little bit, but yeah. I, I did have this, this plan. I wanted to do computer science and accounting. I also wanted to, to pursue like for my master's, I did like machine learning and that was my specialization in, in, um, computer science. And at that point in time, I was like, okay, well, I want to teach computer science. Uh, and, and I was hoping that we get an opportunity to teach in the computer science department, and it did, but only at the, the tutorial level and and um, demonstrating labs. Opportunity for actually, the opportunity for me to actually lecture came up in accounting in the, in the manual studies department. So then I, mm -hmm. I went over there because that's where the opportunities were, were representing themselves. So it's it's kind of still like I still fell into this path, but uh, but in terms of like. I knew that I wanted to study computer science and accounting. Yeah, it was kind of deliberate about that. Yeah. And something that I'm also thinking about right now is the teaching aspect of it, because again, I've taught, I know how challenging it can be. It's very rewarding, but it's still very challenging trying to adapt to different audiences. Yes. Yeah, so what has that whole thing been like for you? in education, having to lecture, working from tutorials and going into becoming um, an assistant professor and everything. Um, was that something you were planning on doing, you were interested in? And um, how do you feel now, many more years of experience in this field? All right. So this is another area where I just kind of went. Okay. Really <laughs> I mean, so I, I actually did not plan to become a lecturer. I just knew that I wanted to pursue computer science and accounting. Mm -hmm. And I also wanted to pursue finance, but you can only do two, you can only double major at University of West Indies. So I knew I wanted to do that. And then after undergraduate level, I wanted to do a master's to maintain my, to update my skills in computer science. I was focusing on machine learning for my master's. And I also wanted to maintain and update my skills, uh, my qualification in accounting. So I pursued the ACCA, right, which is an accounting professional designation. So when it was, it was just when it was pursuing my master's on the University of West Indies has a fantastic um, facility where they're, they encourage and fill students, because I was an MPhil student pursuing the, the um, computer science master's, um, they, they, they encouraged them to teach. And so I started teaching tutorials in computer science and demonstrating computer science first. And I kind of liked it because 
for me, it was like a big show, right? I get to perform in front of an audience and they can't really leave, right? They, they, they have to come here to this tutorial room and I, and I have to talk to them and they can't go anywhere and then they pay me to do it. So for me, it was, it was kind of like a performance. I was like, I like this. And so that's where I started because that's my first experience teaching. So that's how I felt a little bit teaching at the point in time. And then, you know, then obviously transferring into my studies department at University of Destinies and teaching there as well but teaching obviously different subject matter in accounting yeah. and it was the same type of thing it's a performance luckily in my studies the, the, the classes are a lot bigger so yeah. in my studies you have like 300 students and I'm there talking about accounting and the students can't leave and this is great so <laughs> so that's, that's how I felt that's how I like that's how I fall in love with teaching because it really is like you're trying to in, communicate and yeah. the students and obviously seeing them learn and that's where I think it's good well, that's great. And I'm happy for you that you get to hold your students hostage <laughs> while, you, while you teach them about all of your accounting stuff. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And um, I see you smiling and you're happy about everything that you've been able to achieve when it comes to being an educator. So I just mm -hmm. want to know, apart from that, or probably including that, um, what have been some of your best experiences um, in this field of being a professor and everything? So my best experiences, so some of the better experiences I would have had here would obviously be in uh, knowledge with my peers and colleagues. So having papers published mm -hmm. in in good journal, in, well, in some of the top journals, and um, obviously being acknowledged and promoted. So obviously everyone wants to feel appreciated. And so those, in terms of my career, being um, obviously promoted, because, you know, I started as a PhD student with Durham, and then I was, I mean, through the, I've been through the ranks now, I'm now at associate professor level. Um, so being promoted to that level is obviously a great experience and being acknowledged, having papers accepted is, is a great experience. Um, of course, having them rejected isn't so nice, but that happens. That's the way how things work. Um, just being acknowledged by my peers and obviously by my students, having them appreciate what I'm doing and trying to do because ultimately they can tell when you're actually trying. Yes. So I am. So having them appreciate my efforts, all those have those have been the most rewarding experiences for me. Oh, that's so nice, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> No, because everybody wants to feel appreciated. And when you actually have students and colleagues who see the work that you're doing, especially when you come from a place that's very um, different from them, uh, especially coming from the Caribbean, I'm really trying to figure out for you, or probably you can tell me, I mean, um, what has that experience been like for you coming from the Caribbean to the UK at a university where probably you're not seeing a lot of people who look like you or from the same background as you. Um, mm -hmm. So what has that been like for you specifically, if you want to get into uh, it? Yeah, so Durham is definitely like that, right? So Durham is um, not a place where you find a lot of people of color, to be honest, um, in terms of the university. But um, luckily, I'm in a department. Well, I say luckily, but I'm in a department and that has as pretty diverse in both in terms of gender diversity and in terms of ethnicity as well. So that's been good. So my, a lot of my colleagues, are, it's, it's, it's good to see, obviously, multicultural, um, have multicultural perspectives on various issues that we face as a department and as a school. So that's been good. In terms of the overall Durham experience, yeah, it's, it's different. <laughs> Durham is very small. It's not like London, where, again, multicultural. It's not like Manchester. Um, and these other these major cities that you know you'd find in the UK um, is a very small, quiet town. Um, it's similar to Barbados in the sense that it's small, but apart from that, all of the um, similarity you know, kind of ends. Right, it's, it's um, very different, and you just have to get get used to it. Um, luckily, also they're very in, they're very um, interested in cricket. So cricket is a, a massive sport here, and so you just try to engage in yeah. in in, in the cricket. And as a person who's from Barbados, you know there's a lot of cachet associated. They think that I'm the next Mel Commercial, which yeah. I'm not. But you know, <laughs> so so I just try to in, just try to uh, as far as possible, as far as you're allowed to integrate um, and just you know enjoy yourself. So I just play cricket. It's very fairly popular sport here in the north. 
and you can probably play every day if you had the time because you're, you're, you're fanatic about it. And um, apart from that, try to get out of Durham as much as possible. Um, so try to visit Manchester, try to go to um, London, try to go back to the Caribbean where you know you're from, and don't ever lose your roots. Yeah, well, that's great. And that's great. I've been able to navigate um, these two places in a way that's more or less easy for you. <laughs> in a way that you're able to find um, people that you can connect with, because that's not always the case, uh, especially mm-hmm. when we move from a very small island to a very um, cosmopolitan place. So it's not that easy at times to navigate. So I'm happy that you've been able to navigate and feel comfortable in that space and on that note i want to know for young caribbean people who are interested in following a career path which is similar to yours what advice would you give to them the young caribbean people um as far as possible yeah. try, to, try to obviously everyone has their dreams but my i guess my best advice is to try to go as far as possible where life is taking you uh, obviously, you think about your future and prepare yourself for the future. And once you prepare yourself for the future, you don't have to be afraid of it. And that's one of the things I try to do. Always try to prepare for your future. So if you're young, you know, you're 19, you're 18, right now, um, in our societies, um, particularly if you're in Barbados, um, also to a lesser extent in the rest of the Caribbean, our governments contribute to our education to a greater and lesser extent. <laughs> I know. <laughs> 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 but and we are not all we're not all as lucky as people in Barbados, for example. But um, just try to make use of that opportunity, um, and of course, you know. So just up, up, try to get as much skills as you can, so as to take advantage of the future. Because when opportunities present themselves, and many opportunities will present themselves over the course of your your life, you need to be able to take advantage of them. If you can't, then you'll just it, it, it won't make an impact on your life. So the most important thing, I think, is to prepare yourself for the future and don't be afraid of it and try to go where, where life is trying to take you and, you know, just try to be the best because, of course, you're going to be held to a different standard, a higher standard. And so mm-hmm. you need to be prepared for that and just try to um, live up to the best because you can be the best. Yeah, but I'm going to be very cheeky here. And I want to know, for those of us who are not from Barbados, who are from... (laughs) That answer was supposed to encompass everybody. (laughs) Who are from Caribbean nation states where we have even less resources than Barbados and like the Francophone Caribbean, um, as well as the Spanish-speaking Caribbean and Dutch-speaking Caribbean. Yeah, and the Anglophone Caribbean, I think we are the ones with probably the least amount of resources. That's not funny. I'm sorry. But um, yeah, so for people who are not as lucky to be from some of these, um, yeah, what we call, well, I'm not going to get into that, but you know, have more political um, and economic, I should say, pull. I want to know, like, what advice would you give to them? Like from somewhere from St. Louis or St. Vincent? Or, I know? thought I just gave that advice. I was, that advice was not specific to more. No, nope, because I... it was very far much a Bajan, Jamaican, Bohemian, I give the same advice. Try to take advantage of the opportunities that whatever the government is providing you with in terms of resources, whatever it is, to whatever extent. Yeah. Um, I see you laughing, so I guess it's like to no extent. Um, but you know, try to have a plan for your life as mm-hmm. far as possible and try to prepare yourself for your future, whether that be with government assistance or without, you know, just try, try your best to prepare for, for the future and just take advantage of where life is, is trying to take you. Um, that's that's my that's my my best advice. It may not suit everybody. You know, other individuals have like strong um, drives to, to be X or to be Y. And of course, I don't want to kill that that drive, uh, but that that's not how I've gotten to be here. I want to be here more or less by, you know, always thinking about preparing myself for my future. So trying to prepare myself for my mm-hmm. future. And then I don't have to worry about the future because I'm already prepared. Whatever happens, I've prepared. And so then I can just go where life is taking me and take advantage of the opportunities as they present themselves. So my best advice, just, just look to the future and try to prepare for it. And then you don't have to worry about anything else. Okay, Dr. Harris, thank you. <laughs> and um now just going into the bonus question um you spoke about having to navigate your life through things like racism 
um, as well as just living in a new place and the challenges that come with that, as well as being from Barbados and having navigated your career in a path that would actually, um, you know, be fulfilling for you in the future, not only now, but in the future. So I am sure that's very mentally taxing on you from time to time. So I would like to know what do you do um, in order for you to unwind? Um, all right, so to unwind, when I get the opportunity to, my, my go-to is to try to leave Durham and go back to Barbados. That's kind of, kind of how I try to unwind. Um, so I try to be in Barbados many times in a year. Let me not say how much because, you know, my boss might watch this. So I'm, I'm trying to be in Barbados as much as possible. Um, but apart from that, you know, Oof. for me, I, um, and I, I play some cricket here. You know, I, I go to watch football games. I, um, you know, I try to get out to Newcastle or Manchester, Man Manchester for the most part. Uh, these are the other cities that are in the north where, you know, you can probably get a nightlife. Um, and and that's it. So, so in terms of getting out, um, also, you know, I, I tend to go to the, to the gym. So that helps me to unwind. And, yeah, just try to do something, try to learn something new. So that that too. Um, so there are many things that, you know, I know any tactics, but the number one is I just try to get home as much as possible. I try to get back to the Caribbean where, you know, the beach is warm. Well, the sea is warm, um, but the beach is warm too. Um, where, <laughs> where, you know, you can actually walk, walk outside without having to be, you know, all clothed up. You know, it's not freezing. Um, where you know you see faces that look like you faces that look familiar you can't you can be with your family that's what i try to do um for the most part okay mm. well thank you so much dr harris for taking the time to speak with us on today's episode of how did you get here and i just want to know where would you like to be found um so you can find me on linkedin for the most part i'm also on facebook instagram but linkedin so if you want to um, just terry harris linkedin yeah and um, I know you have a podcast. So do you want to talk a little bit about that and what is it? Um, yeah, sure. You know, we have a, we've had a podcast, you know, for the last three years called Just the Politics. Yeah. Um, where um, my host, my co-host, um, Ayo Olalara, and I talk about this politics in the Caribbean region. So that's, that's where we try to focus. The podcast is um, on Facebook. And then you can also find it on um, YouTube, Just Politics. Okay, so I'm going to put that in the description box below. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day. And thank you. Thank you, Bonnie. <laughs> and congrats on all of your achievements. And thank you for having me here today. Oh, thank you, Dr. Harris. <laughs> so now we're going to tell our viewers. Bye. Ciao.